Shalom, shalom, daughters of the to Zion, and greetings from Teshua community. I'm Ima Rafael, and again, we're going to have a special, special message to the daughters of to Zion, not men, women only. So we're going to uh, start with the song this evening. We hope you enjoy the speaking and the scripture verses that I have prepared for you. Now we have a selection by the daughters of to Zion here at Teshua community. Raphael, you're going to get deeper into it? Why, sure I am. Hallelujah. A great love, the love for her husband, is equal to the love for your way. A devotion that is unparalleled. A devotion and a commitment to please Almighty Yah. A love that is so pure and devoted that it represents the love that Yah has for the elect. He said, who are the elect ones? Those that strive daily to keep the Torah truth. And once you understand the suffering that Yahshua went through, for you and I, you want to be committed. You want to love him with all in all. Who can say that they have a friend that's willing to lay down their lives for you or for me? Hallelujah. So, as the woman's beauty comes from obeying Torah truth and honoring her ish, 
the same, there's no two ways, there's only one way. The same way it is for me, it is for you, daughters. It's something we must practice every day. You must have a shepherd, and you must hear, shamak, what the shepherd instructs us to do. Even when Yahweh sent Moshe to deliver the children out of Egypt, they had to hear Moshe. One could say, I'm going to go to the left, and the other one's going to go to the right, and then there's another one who would say, I'm going to go to the back. They had to hear Moshe in order to be delivered. Hallelujah. And once we understand what Yah is trying to do for his people, he's just trying to save us. We can't tell him what to do. We must hear him and obey the messengers. And you say, well, how will I know the messenger? Once you shamak, you see the way the shepherd lives, you see how his heart is for the people, not living above the people, but living just like the people. I don't even know where people get that from. But the shepherd lives just like the people. So you can see his life. I mean, he's not living on top of the hill while you're living in the valley. You driving a Volkswagen and he's driving a Rolls Royce. That's not how it's supposed to be. Hallelujah. So as, the, as you see the shepherd's life, you see his heart for the people. And that's the one you follow. By his life, the way he lives. That's how you know there's a true shepherd of Almighty God. And we being daughters of to Zion, we must obey the scripture every day of our lives. And as we obey the scripture, we have to teach it to our little ones. We must teach this book. They don't come with instructions already up here. We must train our children in this Torah according to the Torah. True. Hallelujah. So for example, I have a few of our young people here. This is the way we live. We live this way every day. And we teach the Torah to our little ones. In our, yes, we hear it in the bed, the tabernacle. But we also teach our children this in our daily school. And we teach it in our homes. Hallelujah. So this evening before I get started, I'm going to ask, we're going to start with a man-child first. Dawi, would you come up here please, sir? This is Zakin Yaramiyah's strength. Dawid. All right, Dawid. Shalom, shalom. Who can find a virtuous woman? For her price is far above rubies. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right, Davida, would you come forth, please? Shalom, shalom. I will lift up my eyes to this point, coming my help. Hallelujah. All right, so poor, would you come forth, please? Shalom, shalom. My scripture is coming from out of Isaiah, chapter 1, verse 19. If you be willing and obedient, you shall eat from the land. Hallelujah. 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 This is our uh, pianist, his daughter. Shalom, shalom. My scripture is coming out of Psalms 119, verses 67 to 68. Before I was afflicted, I have gone against your word, but now, but now I have guarded it. You are tough and do tough. Teach me your laws. Hallelujah. 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 And our last daughter, our last daughter, Hadassah. This is your Shibby's oldest child. Hallelujah. Shalom. 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 And we have known and believed the word of Yahweh. Yahweh is love, and he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in Yahweh. First John 4 and 16. Hallelujah. 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 Yeah. Praise Yah. Hallelujah. So, daughters, everything that we need to know, it comes from the Torah. Hallelujah. And our beauty is, our, is honor and strength. A love for was devoted with such great affection, there can be no other one after Yeshua HaMashiach. No one but Yahweh's love and affection equals to the love of an ish. She represents trust. Her husband never has to fear. 
So when your husband truly trusts in you, he can go away for a month when he comes back. Everything will be in order. Everything. You don't have to worry about a window being knocked out or a child missing. Everything will be in order because that woman fears Almighty Yah. She disciplines herself and she disciplines her children. I want to go to Mishli Proverbs 31 and 11. It says the heart of her husband does safely. He does safely. Trust in her. So he, so that he will have no need of spoil. Anna, she was humble. Anna had only been married once. The humble one of Yahweh. Her name she never left Yahweh, nor the husband of her pure love. You know, usually when a, hus a young woman, when she's lost her husband, the first thing she wants to do is marry again. But once you come to the knowledge of this truth, daughters, and this is no lie, once you come to the knowledge of this truth, you're content and you are satisfied with just this truth. It makes your mind free. You don't want to go back into the world, because can I tell you sometimes when you start looking for somebody, and you beat you, you run ahead of Almighty Yah, you might get something that you really don't want. Yes. And then you want to honor those vows, and then you don't want to separate, but if you don't, you don't want to ever get ahead of Almighty Yah. So it's just tough to just wait patiently. True. You say, well, I feel I still feel young and very. That may be the case, but you still need to wait. Yes. When you wait on Almighty Yah, He will not withhold any tough thing from you. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah. So Lucas, Luke chapter 2, verse 36, it says that there was one named Anna, the humble one of Yah, a prophetess. Now I don't mean she went around from house to house prophesying. She waited on the people in the Bay Area. Hallelujah. The daughter of Phanuel, the tribe of Asher, she was of great age and had lived with her husband only seven years from her virginity. And she was a widow of about four scores and four years. She was 84 years old and she never went seeking another man. She departed not from the great tabernacle but served Yahweh with fasting and with prayer yes. night and day. Yes. You say, oh, that's a hard thing. The way of a transgressor is hard. But if we understand that this daughter set herself apart, she wasn't given over to just the lust of her flesh. She didn't have anyone to take care of her. So she couldn't send out to the store for this, that, and the other. So she said, I'll make myself useful. I'll work willingly with my hands. And whatever is set before me, that I will eat. We're not like that today. But now just look at yourself. Look at what you got to have. I look at the things that I get. It's nothing that I really, really need. It's just the, the things that you want. Not being frugal always with the little funds that you do have. We need to learn to be frugal. Yes. And we need to learn to de deny this old corrupt flesh. Hallelujah. That's what we need to do. Hallelujah. But as daughters of design, it's one thing if we could ever get that down pat. We must learn to be obedient. You know, when women come here, they think, well, let me show you how to do this, and let me show you how to do this. Yes. There's nothing new under the sun no. that we haven't experienced here. True. And we've been truly blessed. Uh, yes. We're learning how to do without mm -hmm. and to make use of what little that we have. True. Yeah. We've learned how to do it. And the oldest among us, oh, Saki, could you just put the camera on Eva Surveyor? The oldest among us has learned to do without. She denied herself when Rab told her to come off her job. And she just came on. She didn't fight and kick with them and say, who does he think he is? She knew he was the messenger. And as he brought her this far, she know I'm going to continue to follow him because I've seen his life. Yes. I know what his issue is about. Hallelujah. We have fellowship together. Yes. She knew me. Yes. She knew Rab. She's been to my home. She didn't fight with him. He told she's about to give up her furniture. She bought new furniture. She didn't kick and say, who do you think you are? No, she didn't. She was obedient. That's why she's blessed today. Hallelujah. She's not bent over. Yeah. Hold yeah. up. Eva, would you stand up, please? 
Just stand up. I want to see the beauty of this, this age woman. Yes, hallelujah. She's 76. Look at the beauty of her. She's not been over. No. She's not crippled. She she walks every day for her health yes. and well-being. Yes. And that's how all the daughters should be. Yes. We shouldn't make excuses why we we can't do this and we can't do that. Yes. Told us so much evil. Hallelujah. 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 Ema's been with us 35 years plus. Yes. And that's a blessing. It is. It's a blessing. Hallelujah. In her Hallelujah. obedience, she's been blessed. Hallelujah. 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 So let me go to 1 Samuel. Praise you 1 Samuel 15 and 23. And it reads, For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. And stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. Because you have rejected the word of Yah, he has also rejected you from being king. He's talking to Samuel here. So if you, dis if you uh, don't obey the messenger, you say, I can do it better, or I'm going to do it this way, you can be rejected almighty God. You just find yourself always stumbling and falling. You can't do anything right. It's because you don't want your mind to hear the messenger. That's why. I know we want to make excuses and we want to have reasons why we do this, that, and the other. It's because you do not hear the messenger. That's it. That's it. The messenger in this place at this time is Rehab Dawi. Yes. We've been married 44 years. As of last, uh, was it first? last Wednesday, I think. And because I obeyed the messenger, I was Barack. When we got this letter, it wasn't about me and what I wanted and how I wanted to do things. It was about the community. And that's what he made very, very clear to me. He said, the community comes first. We used to even have a date night. On Thursday, we had a date night. He and I would go out for, uh, what was this? Uh, not the smoothie. Yogurt. And he would always say, you don't put anything on your yogurt. So we would always have a date night. But once we moved here, it wasn't about him and I having a date night. It was about the community first, willing to deny me. Yes. And that's what we haven't got. We have to deny ourselves. Yes. To live like this, in order to get into the kingdom, you've got to deny yourself. You can't be worried about getting a new car, new furniture, a new frock every week. Buy you some fabric and make you. Just learn how to sew. When you keep saying, I can't, I, well, I would, but I can't, and I would, but this, that, and the other, you're never going to sew. You're never going to progress to doing what a righteous woman is supposed to do. Yes. Yeah. We have daughters here. We know how to work with our children. Yes. We teach our children. We work. Can I tell you, when I get on one child, I get on them all. Yes. But well, do you have any special ones? They're all special. Yes. They're all special. So if one does something wrong, and I know that he should get a pop pop, he's gonna get a pop pop. Yes. And the other's gonna get a pop pop too. Oh, you shouldn't spank children. The Torah says, yes. with the rod of correction, yes. you beat them. Yes. He didn't say kill them. He didn't say beat them in the face. He said get a rod. So we know how to discipline our children. Yes. We do, and we do it with love because. The pure hava of Almighty Yah will show you how to discipline your children. And when mothers have children, when you truly, truly love them, you just won't let them get away with anything. Because they're going to bring shame on you. And you always want your children to do excellent. So you work with them night and day. Growing up as a little girl, my mother worked with me all the time. And I thought she was too hard. Well, what does a six-year-old know? What, what did I know? I didn't know anything. She would say, when you sit down, sit erect. Brush your dress down. Cross your ankles. Don't dig in your nose. Don't pick in your eyes. And I'm like, do I have to do all that to grow up? Why, if my nose is itching, what do I do? I can't stick my finger up there? That's what I thought as a little girl. So what do I know? No more than your six-year-old knows. So that's why you bring them up righteously. Yes. And when they're sitting at the table and they get a little rowdy, you just say, hmm, baby. You can't do that. If they continue to do you said, Mommy said no. What's wrong with that? Nothing. 
That's why the children are messed up today. Because they never were corrected. Today, the world's raising people. They have no discipline. Men don't know how to pull up their britches. The young girl don't know she's supposed to cover her chest, cover your arms. Your body is meant for your husband, your itch. It's not meant for everybody to see. It's not. You're special. If we can under, only understand the daughters of Tazayan, you're special. In order to be that special help, you don't have to expose anything to get a husband. You cover yourself. That Over all these years, I've learned that. You cover yourself. Yes. Can I tell you, once I came to the knowledge of the truth, I knew I had to cover myself. Yes. I learned the ways of the world, and I knew that that wasn't right. Once I came to the knowledge that Yahshua had come to make me free, I knew I had to cover myself. Yes. I knew I had to take off those pants because I wore pants to draw attention. And I don't care what any woman tells you. When she puts on a pair of pants, she's trying to draw attention yes. to her buttocks, to her private parts. And no man should see that but the man she's married to. It's true. You can say, well, my job requires that they come off the job. Yes. Can I tell you, my job required that too. And then I told him that according to the Torah, I must cover myself and dress like a woman. And they didn't even fight with me about that. If it's all right for a woman to wear pants, then let, take, let your inch wear a dress then. If, you're, if it's all right for the woman to wear a pair of pants, then the man has every right to put on a mini dress. And that's the truth. Yes. So you can try to balance it. If it's not according to Torah, we should not do that. We must understand that. It's hallelujah. So we must learn in our obedience that's the only way you're going to be made free. Let me go to Hebrews, hallelujah. Hebrews 11 and 11. Bless you. Hallelujah. Hebrews 11 and 11. It says, through Imona, faith, Sarah herself received strength to conceive seed and was delivered of a child when she was past her age. She believed Almighty. And that's the only reason she was able to bring forth a child. In her obedience. She heard what Yah said and she lied. She said, am I going to have pleasure in my old age? Well, Yah said, you just believe me. And in due time, you're going to bring forth a child. Hallelujah. In her obedience, she received strength. And she brought forth a man child. Hebrews, hallelujah, 5 and 8. And it reads... Through Yahshua, he was the son of Almighty Yah. Yet he learned in obedience. He suffered many things. So that's what Yah is trying to tell us. We must be obedient according to this, the written pages of this book in order to be made free and to be a present special help from Almighty Yah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me read yeah. Titus 2 and 5. Titus 2 and 5 it says to be discreet this is the age woman she must be discreet chaste when it says chaste it means clean keepers at home not keepers in nobody else's house not keepers on a job can I tell your daughters if you just learn how to live simple just live simple not keeping up with everybody Live simple. Only by what you really, really need. Then you can stay at home. And learn to be a keeper at home. It says, chase keepers at home. Tub, obedient to your own husband. Now if you're on a job, you're going to be obedient to the boss man. And then when you get home to your issue, you're going to talk smart. I'm tired, I got to lay down before I cook you something. That's not how it should be. We've been messed up. Because of the love of that green dog. Yes. That's why we're messed up today. Yes. And you only find a few people living this way. You're not going to find many. Even when Noah was building the ark. You didn't find many. They thought he was stupid. They thought he was a madman. They thought he was crazy. So how many entered? If you just think. How many do you think entered into that ship? Only eight. All, how many years was it that he preached? 
It was a hundred, a hundred and one. Uh, just a hundred years. And only eight entered into the ark. Only eight. Well, you think things have gotten better, gotten worse. Yes. We've come to the understanding and the power of his name. Because you know the name Jesus is a lie. Mm -hmm. Almighty Yah came to a Hebrew people. Yes. Did you all hear me? Yes. He came to a Hebrew yeah. people. They were oppressed and beaten down. And in the Hebrew language, and the Hebrew letters, there is no J. So how in the world do you, Jesus is an American name. He came to a Hebrew people. And he made that people free. And those that obeyed his truth became the Israelites. Hallelujah. So it said we must be keepers at home, that the word of Yah be not blasphemed. We must learn to do those things that are righteous. I don't like to cook, but that's why you don't like to cook, because you're not at home. Once you learn what Yah commands of you, then you take great delight in it. Yes. I take great delight in cooking and preparing. Yeah. I take great delight in cleaning. Yeah. Yes, I do. Because that's what we're supposed to do. The world will tell you, get a job, you don't have to clean. Get, you can hire somebody to do it for you. Well, I don't want no other woman going through my things or cleaning my house or putting things that I don't know where it is. So that, that's your job. That's my job. Taking care of, I take great delight in taking care of my my husband, my age. I don't want no other woman coming in there, making up my bed that he and I slept in. Yes. I can do that. Yes. So once we learn how to be obedient, yes. we'll be blessed of Almighty Yah. Yes. One more scripture verse about obedience. I'm going to go to Exodus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Exodus 19, 5 and 6. It says, Now therefore, if you will obey the voice of Yah, indeed, and keep the covenant, then you shall be a peculiar people, a peculiar treasure unto me above all people. For all the earth is mine. And you shall be unto me a kingdom of priests, a Kodesh nation. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. So he's telling Moshe, speak these words to the children of Israel. So they know how to care. What they, they will know what I expect of them. When you obey this living truth, you are peculiar. You are different. There are not many people like the people of Israel. How many daughters you find when you go out shopping or just go out with your ish? How many daughters you see dressed like this? Everybody's exposing everything on them. Yes. They got on the painted nails, the false nails, the cow lashes. Your beauty comes from obeying truth. Yes. Your beauty comes from obeying truth. Yes. One more time, my host key. Just take the camera around so they can see what beautiful doors we're. We're not painted up. We're covered. We're clean. Our heads are covered. Hallelujah. 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 And we're striving. You said, well, do you fall? Well, sure, we, we make mistakes, but we strive not to do it again. It's my harbor. This is what beauty did. We look clean. Yes. Set apart. Kodesh. Yeah. Meat for the master's use. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless y'all. So as you learn to obey this truth, it'll show you how to dress. No one will even have to tell you. No. You'll just know how to dress before Almighty Yah. Yes. Hallelujah. 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 Bless Yah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we've all learned. There's some older that's been here a little bit longer. Yes. And we help each other every day. Yes. We help each other every day. We correct each other. Our actions and our deeds. Hallelujah. Everybody here knows how to dress up. No problem. We're still working on the cooking part, but other than that, we know how to dress. We know how to carry ourselves. We know how to govern our conversation. 
I remember a woman coming here some years ago, she said, every 40-year-old woman knows what to talk about. I said, not so. Every 40-year-old woman don't know what to talk about. If you've been out in the streets and you party and you're clubbing, you don't know what to talk about. No. The only way you're going to know how to talk about this is you're eating the daily lecture. And as we learn of Yahshua HaMashiach, then we'll know how to govern our conversation. Hallelujah. 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 So let me read to you about, there was a man, and he was a hateful man. But he had a righteous wife, because she obeyed the Torah. But she honored her husband. She didn't disrespect him, because he was wicked. She knew she had married this man. And she knew, according to the Torah, I must honor him. And she did. So we want to go to 1 Samuel, Samuel, verse 25, chapter 25, verse 9. And when Dawid was a young man, he came and he spoke to Nabal according to all the words in the name of Dawid. And verse 10, and Nabal answered Dawid, the servant, and said, Who is Dawid? And who is the son of Jesse? There may be many servants nowadays that break away every man from his master. He said, Shall I then take my bread and my water and my flesh that I have killed for my shears and give to another man who I know not whence? Should I get just because he asked for it, I'm just going to give it to him? First Samuel. 25 and 23. And when Abigail, his wife, saw Dawid, she hastened and lighted on an ass and fell before Dawid on her face and bowed herself to the ground and fell at his feet and said, Upon me, my master, upon me, let my ish iniquity be on me. Let your handmaid, I pray you, speak in your audience and hear the words of your handmaid. Because she knew the Torah. It was righteous for her and for him to give bread, meat to the king and his army. But he said, I don't know what this is done. Because he didn't know the Torah. So he didn't know what was right to do. But his isha did. So she got on an ass and she hastened before King after Dawi. And she went to him and explained why her husband had done so. Hallelujah. She says, Let not my master, I beg you, reward this man of Belial, this this uh, devil worshiper. She says, His name is Nabal, for as his name is, so is he. Nabal is his name. And folly is with this man. But I, your handmaid, saw not the young men of my master, whom you did send. Now therefore, my master, as Yahweh lives, and as your nephesh live, seeing Yahweh has withholding you from coming to shed blood, and from avenging yourself with your own hand, now let your enemies, that they that seek evil to my master, be as Nabal. And now his blessings which your handmaid has brought to my master, let it even be given to the young men that follow my master. And I pray you, forgive the trespasses of your handmaid, for Yahweh will certainly make my master a sure house, because my master fights the battle of Yahweh. And evil has not been found in you all your days. So she went and made the way right for her husband. Her husband's name is Nabal. It meant foolishness and folly. She did that which was righteous. Hallelujah. So we as the daughters of Zion, we must practice what is righteous. If you're married, daughters, listen to me. If your husband is not saved and he's not walking in his truth, and you are, you still honor him. You obey him. Let him see your light shining in the home. 
You don't, it's not your place to preach to him. It's not your place to correct him. It's not. Your place is just to obey to him. Let your light shine. And as he sees your light shining, he'll find out what's right to do. He'll say, baby, what is it that you're doing different? And then you can share with him. Or you can say, let me, let me introduce you to my shepherd. And he can explain this in a more excellent way. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Over these years, I've seen my shepherd's life. And can I tell you, it has been the saving power for me. As I saw Ray Ark abandoning things about him <clears throat> that were not right, it helped me. And over the years, I can truly say, he has had a heart for the people. Yes. We have yeah. never lived above the people. No. no. We've never took the finances of the people yes. and went on a vacation. No. The first vacation we ever took is from the coins and the change that he saved. And we went on a cruise to Nassau. And can I tell you, I wept like a baby. You say, why? Because I was away from my family. I was used to being around the people of Yah. And I'm like, we're doing something that they can't come with us. So we were gone for five days and four nights. And I weep every day. I'm not lying, I weep every day. When I got home, I was so happy. I was so happy, happy, happy. And until you get that kind of heart, you will never know how to love anybody. You will never. And we need to learn to love, truly love. And the only way that's going to come is by the obedience of this Torah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me read just a little bit more. 1 Samuel chapter 25, verse 32. It says, And thy we said to Abigail, Blessed be Yahweh, the sovereign master of Israel, El, which sent you this day to meet me. Yah sent her. Because she was truly a daughter of Tezion. He said, Blessed be your advice, and blessed be you, which has kept me this day from coming to shed blood. Because what Nabal did was wicked, it was evil. And can I tell you that we was going to avenge him too. And from avenging myself with my own hand, he was going to take care of Nabal. For in very deed, as Yahweh, the sovereign master of Israel El lives, which has kept me back from hurting you, he would have destroyed her too, because she belonged to Nabal. Except you had hastened and come to meet me, surely there had not been left to Nabal by the morning light and any that pissed against the wall. He was going to kill everything that had anything to do with Nabal. So that we received of her hand that which she had brought him and said to her, Go up in Shalom to your house. See, I have hearkened to your voice and have accepted your person. Hallelujah. 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 So in order for us to be blessed, boys, we must obey the Torah. We must examine ourselves daily to be that present and very special helper of Almighty Yah. The righteous woman, she rises early to meet the needs of her home and if she can assist anybody here, yes. that's what she does. Hallelujah. I, like I said, there's one door I can truly say, no matter whenever you call her or whenever you need her, she'll come running. She will, she'll come running. And that's how we all should be. It shouldn't be just one like that. We all should be like that. Not sometime, once a month, every day. That's how we should be. I have another scripture I want to read about being humble. If you want to be like uh, Abigail, you must humble yourself. We can't be like the world the way we were brought up daughters. We just can't. Yes, I grew up, as my little brother would say, he said, you were the bossy one. Well, all my cousins said that about me too. I was the bossy one. Well, my mother put me in charge. So that's why I was born. And I didn't want to fail my mother. So we don't want to fail Almighty God. Hallelujah. So whatever it takes, if you just be willing and obedient, you shall eat the tub of the land. 
So they can call me bossy all they want. I'm still bossy. I like to get the job done. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. So I'm going to go to Deuteronomy chapter 8 and 2. Deuteronomy chapter 8 and 2. I don't mean be, being called bossy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It says, And thou shalt remember all the ways which Yah your Abba lead thee these forty years in the wilderness to humble you. So even though Moshe had led the children of Israel out of Egypt, for forty years they wandered, and they wandered, and they wandered, to prove that. You see, if you, are you going to only love me for the fish and the loaves? Are you, are, are you going to love me because I have made you free? So then you're going to have trials and tribulations. He said, oh, my children are so hard-headed. So what do you do? Flush them down the toilet? No. Set them on fire? What do you no. do with them? You still correct them and show them yes. what's right to do. He said, well, i got ten youngins. So what do you do? You give them up for adoption? No. Or do you say, Yah, I barack you for everything yes. that you've done for me? Yes. And I'm going to raise my children up right according to the Torah. Yes. And I'm going to take great delight. If you say to yourself, I'm going to take great delight in everything Yah does, then you'll be blessed of Yah. Yes. You won't find it a burden. You won't find it too heavy that you can't bear it. There are times it might get tinge there, but can I tell you something? If you just get on your knees and if you do as the prophet is Anna, fast and pray, deliverance will come. Fasting takes all the fight out of you. Yes, it yes. takes all the wind out of your sails. Yes. Hallelujah. Not when you fake and fast and go around telling everybody, oh yeah, I'm fasting. No, when you truly fast, yeah, the stomach will growl. Yes. It's the food's just moving from here to there. The headache will come. And the humbleness, you'll become broken. Yes. I know some of us don't think that you should fast, but it's something that the women, the true daughters of Tezion, should do. Yes. The true daughters of Tezion should fast. You should take it upon yourself. You say, if Anna did it daily, you can do it. Today they call it intermittent fasting. I call it the fast that the daughter to Zion, our prophet is God. Yes. And I always say, y'all make me like her. Yes. Make me like her. So I'm not just giving over to the lust of my belly. I got, I got to have this. I got to have this kind of ice cream. No, oh, no. I've been sweet all week. What's sweet about you? Nothing. Tell me. Tell me what's sweet about you. There's nothing more sweet about you than it is about me. Just practicing walking this way will bring about a sweetness to Almighty Yah. But it's something you must do every day. Keeping your attitude in check. Humbling yourself. If someone says something smart, you don't go back smart. That's ghetto. We don't want to do the ghetto around here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So once you humble yourself and truly repent, we, when you repent, that means you're not going to do that thing again. You're going to get it right. Your purpose in your heart, y'all, I want to please you. As I want to please my mother as a little girl, we must please Almighty Yah the very same way. He has created us to shahai. You call it worship, to shahai him. You honor him with your life. Every day. Every day. Am I pleasing? When you wake up in the morning, you pray that prayer. When you go to bed, y'all, was I pleasing before you? Did I have great fellowship with, with the sisterhood? Share a scripture with the sisters. That's what we do. You just share a scripture. When you come in in the morning, if you're cooking, breakfast for a, a community setting like this, share a scripture with the daughters. Usually when I come to the uh, dining hall in the morning, I really like to kind of stay quiet, get my thoughts together. Then I want to roll. Yes. That's how I do it. Then I roll. Yes. I may, Sakia may say something and we get started from there. We discuss the children. True. We discuss the sisterhood. Yes. There are many things that we discuss, but it always ends up in tour how yes. we should live with each other. Mm -hmm. And how we should love each other. And how we should be willing to help each other. Yes. You know, if I'm out in the garden picking greens and you walk by and you don't mm -hmm. offer to help, I'm thinking something's wrong with you. Yes. 
That's the Did truth. you just fall off the moon? Or is that a falling star or is it a comet? Daughter, she says, I'm in age. I'm 64. And if I'm out there working and you just walk by, I think something's wrong with you. Yes. Because if I walked outside and I saw a Hope Urona out there, if, even if she was just picking up rocks, I would say, why are you doing that? Yes. And she said, well, my husband wanted me to do such and such and the other, or rap commissioned me to do that. I would assist her. That's the truth. You yes. would. Yeah, yeah. I would tell her, well, you know, my back hurt. Or I yeah. slept too long. No, when I just thought yeah. it happened. Can I tell you, once in just doing that, can I tell you that the back pain would lead to it? Yeah. Yeah, it would. Hallelujah. And our obedience. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Let me just share this story. I used to go to this gym, and it was called Spa Lady. It was just for women only. I think it went from Spa Lady to Living Well. And I was committed to going to that gym. And one day, I would do weights every other day. Well, one particular day, I did weights two days back to back. Well, I pulled a muscle. And can I tell you, I knew what had happened. I put the weights down. I went back into the dressing room, got dressed, got into my car, went home, and I was in so much pain, I didn't know what to do. Well, I called Rayak, and he comes home. And I, I see, he said, ask me what I want to do. I said, I'll just wait. Maybe the muscle will relax. Well, it didn't relax. He takes me to the emergency room. Guess what they told me? You got a pull muscle. I'm like, wow. Well, that's what I just told you. I have a pull muscle because I lifted, I did weights two days back to back. Well, can I tell you, they gave me muscle relaxers, painkillers, nothing worked. So on that Sunday, I went to service. At that time, we were not keeping the Shabbat. We were keeping Sunday. But can I tell you, y'all knows who you are before yes. you enter into your mother's womb. Yes. Okay. So the shepherd, as he, he had a prayer line, he always had a prayer line, he told me to lift my hands to the Shemaiah. And I'm looking at him like, I got to pull my, I can't even lift my, I couldn't even do this. So when he said that, right away, I'm like, oh my. And I, I just did that. Can I tell you, the muscle relaxed. There was no pain, no nothing. Hallelujah. He knew I had a pull muscle too. I don't know if he knew to the extent that I couldn't lift my hand. I don't even think I had explained that. But that's what he told me. He just said, lift your hands to heaven. And I'm like, I just, I just did that. Did he heal you? No, it wasn't his healing power. He had none. It was just y'all. Me obeying the shepherd. And y'all, for by me doing that, by my obedience, like Abigail, yeah. Hallelujah. I was blessed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I was blessed. Yeah. Just by obeying the voice of a shepherd. Yes. Hallelujah. 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 So, daughter, if you want to be that special help from Almighty God, you just must obey. It all stems in obedience in everything. Now, what you think, your ideas and your opinions don't mean anything. Let me say that again. Your ideas, your opinion, the way you were brought up, it doesn't mean anything. The only thing that means anything is obeying the pages of this book from Almighty Yah. He is the creator that has created you to shahai him, to live according to this book, and nothing else matters. I don't care. You know, I used to wonder about that. And when people will say, well, let me tell you what I think. Well, it doesn't matter what you think. No, no. It doesn't matter what you think. If it doesn't come from this, it doesn't matter what you think. So I told you, y'all, for this place, the fellowship, there's more to come. I'm going to stop here for this evening, and I'll get back with you all on next Wednesday. Praise y'all. Um, I just told y'all for Rayak asking me to do this and me being faithful Hallelujah. with what the man of Yah and I don't practice what I'm going to say I just go over a few scriptures I go over the pages he gave me what to say and I'll just add some more scriptures with it that's all I do but I'd rather be obedient than they operate as a witch I know about witches too yes. Hallelujah yes. If you go to the book of 1 Samuel, you'll find out about witches. But there's nothing that Yah doesn't know or understand. 
Yah has created all things. Even Trump for this hour. Did you hear me? Even Trump for this hour. So we told Yah for his kindness that he's shown us this day that I may come before you daughters and speak just for a little while. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And when the COVID virus is over or when it subsided somewhat, then Rayop will let you know when you are welcome to come. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So that you can see how we live, how we fellowship one with another. There's no pretense here. It's not because we've gone through many trials and tribulations. Now, let me take we haven't gone through that many trials and tribulations. We have it tough here. Yes. Very, very tough. So that, yeah. yeah. It's tough. Yes. The things that we have, the meals that we eat, daughters. If you want to see some young daughters that know how to cook, or as you would say, throw down, they know how to throw down. Yes. We have excellent food here. Yes. The feast yes. days are upon us. We're going to have great fellowship. We're going to have great meals. Even though there won't be a lot coming, but we're still going to have a lot of great meals yes. prepared. We have wonderful desserts prepared. Yes. And we just told you for all he's done. So, yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. So Yahweh Baruch you, daughters of Zion. <laughs> Obedience is the key to be that present, very special help from Almighty Yah. Just let your light shine in your home. You don't have to go out on the streets to preach. I don't preach to men. I live by example before the daughters of Zion. And that's the key. You must live by example. Not by your much speech, but by the way you live. So we told you all for all things. We'll see you next week, Wednesday. And again, greetings from Teshua Community. Have an excellent, excellent week. Shalom. Shalom. Thank you.